this will be a bit of a, re I think a review. Okay, so um, converting a word equation into a actual chemical reaction. So oxygen gas and nitrogen gas react to form nitrogen dioxide. So this goes over naming, this goes over everything. So oxygen gas, what's oxygen gas? What's the formula for oxygen gas? It's O2 because it's a Brinkelhoff. All right, you gotta remember the Brinkelhoff. So oxygen gas, O2, O2, you have to put the G so that we know that it is a gas, okay? Because you could have liquid oxygen, which is rocket fuel. You probably wouldn't have it in our lab, though. Plus nitrogen gas. React to form. So you put a little arrow. That's the reaction. Nitrogen dioxide. What's nitrogen? What's the formula for nitrogen dioxide? NO2. Because it's a covalent compound. It is a gas. Okay. Are we done? Why are we not done? It's got to be balanced. So what am I going to do? We have two nitrogens. I need two nitrogens. So if I, it doesn't need to be that big of a font. So if I put two nitrogens there. Oh, sorry. There we go. So if I put a two there. I now have the two nitrogens I need, but I have four oxygens. So I have to put a two in front of the oxygen and then it's balanced. <clears throat> All right, next one, solid iron. What's, what's the formula for iron or symbol for iron? Fe is iron and it's solid. Reacts with fluorine gas. Fluorine is a Brinkelhoff, so it's F2 gas to produce solid iron fluoride, iron three fluoride. So iron three means it has a charge of three. What's the charge on fluorine? Look on you, you're going to need your data package here, peoples. What's the charge on fluorine? Negative one. So remember, they would switch. So it's FeF3, and it's solid. So we put an S there. <clears throat> then what are we going to do? You gotta balance it. So how am I gonna balance it? We have a th we have three fluorines here, we have two there. I could get them both to six, right? So if I put a two there, that gives me six fluorines on that side. If I put a three there, that gives me six fluorines on that side. But now I have two fluorines on the products. So if I just throw a two, Why are you not writing? What is two there? Then we're good. <clears throat> All right. Aqueous ammonium nitride. So what's ammonium? It's on you. You're gonna have to look in your data package. Ammonium is NH4, NH4 plus. If I say nitride, what is that? The IDE tells you it's, it's just nitrogen, okay? What's the charge on nitrogen? It's negative three. So you're gonna switch those, so ammonium nitride is that NH4, three of them, plus N, or t yeah, plus N. It's aqueous, so you put the AQ there. Reacts with aqueous 
or aqueous, aqueous, whatever you want to call it, lead three chlorate. What's the formula for lead? PB, and it's lead two, sorry. So PB plus two. Chlorate. You're going to have to look on your data package. What's the symbol for chlorate? ClO3. What's the charge? Negative one. When I say data package, does everybody know what I mean? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So you're going to the polyatomics here, this page on your data package, okay? All right, so reacting with lead two chlorate, so that's going to be ClO3. Two, and that's aqueous, goes to aqueous ammonium chlorate. So now ammonium is NH4, chlorate is ClO3. So it's going to be NH4, ClO3. And that's aqueous, AQ, plus Lead to nitride. Lead to nitride, so PB3N2, and that is... Okay, what does the word precipitate mean? What state is it? It's solid. It's solid. Okay, if you see the word precipitate, we're going to get into this more tomorrow and the next day. It means it's a solid, so... It means it falls out of solution. What's left? What do you have to do? Balance. But when you're balancing these, always treat the polyatomics, the NH4s and the ClO3s, as one. Okay, so if we look at this, we have three ammoniums and two chlorates, whereas on this side, we only have one and one. Okay, so how could three and two be combined to make a, a nice whole number? You want to make them six, right? So if I put a six there, that gives me six ammonium and six chlorates. Here I've got two chlorates. So what number do I have to put here? Three. Because that'll give me three chlorates. And I have three ammoniums, but I need six. So I'm going to put a two there. And then just check everything else. Two nitrogens, two nitrogens, three leads, three leads. Okay. You want to try the next one on your own? Try the next one on your own. Aqueous hydrogen chloride plus aqueous magnesium hydroxide yield aqueous magnesium chloride and liquid water. and try balancing it.
Are we ready? No? Okay. Is this what we got? Aqueous hydrogen chloride is HCl. What should you actually call it? It's hydrochloric acid, right? Because it's dissolved in water. Plus magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium is plus two. Hydroxyl group, if you look on your polyatomic, is OH minus goes to magnesium chloride, MgCl2, plus water, liquid water. So you had to put the L there. And then to balance it, you need two hydrochloric acids and two waters to balance it. Do you want to try the next two on your own? Try the next two on your own. And then at the end. OK. Chemical types of chemical reactions. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to go run through all the different types of chemical reactions. We'll write them out, blah, 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 blah. Tomorrow, I'm going to show you just demos of all these different types of reactions, okay? What they look like. So you've done this in grade 10, I assume. You've done the different types of chemical reactions, all right? There's six types that you need to be aware of. There's more than that, by the way. These are just the six that we're focusing on. There's hundreds of types of chemical reactions, but a lot of them are in university, so we're not worried about those ones. All right, so the ones you are required to know, you need to be able to predict the products. If I give you the reactants, you'll have to recognize what it is and predict the products. We're not there yet, we'll get there, but that's where we're gonna end up. Okay, so the first type is a synthesis reaction, okay? Sometimes you can call it a combination, but it's actually called a synthesis. <clears throat> Two or more reactants will combine to form a single product. Okay, so the general equation would be A plus B, whoops, goes to C. Or A, let's write AB, that's a little bit more realistic. AB. But C is the thing. It's two going to one. It could be three going to one. It could be four going to one. But it's producing a single compound. We're synthesizing something. Okay? Some examples of this. If we take magnesium, I'll show you this tomorrow, and oxygen gas, essentially you can burn the magnesium and you get MgO, which is a solid. Magnesium oxide. Okay, two elements, doesn't have to be elements, but two pro or reactants forming one compound. I do need to put a two on the magnesium, thank you. Boom. And you have to balance them, obviously. It doesn't have to just be a metal. It could be hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas. What do you think hydrogen and oxygen are going to produce? H2O. It's going to form water, H2O. Uh, we got to balance this. So let's. Four hydrogens, four hydrogens, boom, we're balanced. Okay, that's a synthesis reaction. Okay. Two or more elements form a single compound. The reverse of that is a decomposition. You're breaking something up. Okay? So, um, 
Well, we'll just write the reverse. If we have the compound AB, it's going to break into A plus B. It's the exact opposite reaction. <coughs> so a couple um, could have silver oxide, Ag2O, silver one oxide will break into, what do you think silver oxide is going to break into? Silver plus, O2. silver plus oxygen. Silver is a solid. Oxygen is a Brinkelhoff, so you got to write O2. Gas there. I don't know what silver oxide is. I want to say solid. It would make sense. Cause yeah. Let's just say solid. Um, but we got to balance it. We have two oxygens on the right. We need two oxygens on the left. But now we have four silvers, so we throw a four in the front of there. Now, I want to be clear. These are, like, we just write them like this, and this is one thing about high school science. Is it's not, it oversimplifies things. Um, it's not like this reaction, if you have silver oxide, it's just going to break apart. You have to get, we're going to learn this later on in this chapter. There's an energy hump you got to get over to start the reaction. So you have to put energy into it sometimes. Some things break down instantly, but a lot of things you need this, this reaction is a hump that you have to put energy in, whether it's heat with a flame or some sort of catalyst that speeds up the reaction. We're going to learn a little bit about that here, but if you take Chem 12, you learn more about those things that speed up and slow down reactions. All right. Uh, the other thing you can do is, or another type would be water, liquid water. If you run a current through water, and we'll, you can do, uh, we won't do it here, but I think in Chem 12, you might do it. If you run an electro electric current through water, it's called electrolysis, you can break it up into its two components. So hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. I guess we need a two there. All right, that would be called electrolysis if you're running <clears throat> uh, electrical current into it. But it, sorry, we don't do it in Chem 11. Chem 12, you do electrical. It's called electrochemistry. Part of the course. Um, but you can see one element is going to two different elements. Okay? So that's a decal. All right, single replacement. So a single replacement means you're replacing one thing, it's in the name. So if A is a metal, all right, metals kick out metals. This A will kick out the metal. Remember the metal is always written first. So A, if A is a metal, will kick out B and you'll get AC plus B by itself. If A is a non-metal, it kicks out the non-metal which the way we wrote it here would be C. And so you'll get AB plus C by itself. So a couple of examples here would be, we have aluminum plus copper chloride. So metals kick out metals. So what's the product? What does the aluminum replace? It replaces the copper. <coughs> It'll kick out the copper. So you're going to get aluminum chloride. What's the charge on aluminum? It's plus 3. And chlorine's minus one. So it'd be AlCl3. 
aqueous plus copper solid. Is it balanced? So where do, how do I balance it? What am I putting where? I'll let you do it and then we'll see if we... Everything always has to be balanced, people. So two aluminums plus three copper chlorides goes produces two aluminum chlorides plus three coppers. Yep, do we agree? Okay, so that's an example of a metal replacing a metal. You can have a non-metal. So if we have chlorine gas, which you wouldn't really want to be around, that is a non-metal. Plus potassium iodide, which is a solid. What's the chlorine going to replace? Potassium or iodine? The iodine, because that's the non-metal. So it bounces the potassium iodide, and you end up with, is iodine, iodine a Brinkelhoff? It is, so it's I2. I don't think it would be a liquid or a gas at this temperature. Go away. Plus KCl, which would be solid. Let's see, gas. I don't know. I'm just guessing at the state. Um, with the MS system, are we going to have to like, predict if it's a solid or No. I'll either write it in the, like, in the sentence, or I'll just want the products. Um, so we get I2 plus KCl, is that balanced? It is. I got two chlorines here, I only got one there, so if I put, uh, I put a two there, and then I need a two there. All right. You've all seen those, right? We've done single replacements last year. All right, if we can do single replacement, we can also do double replacement. What do you think happens in a double replacement? Two, Two things get replaced. It's nice how they name them this nice way. Um, so it's just two elements trading places. Metals trade with metals. Non-metals trade with non-metals. That's all you really need to remember. So. So we have A, B, and we have C, D. These are usually in aqueous solution. <clears throat> what are the products going to be? The metals. Replace the metals. Or non-metals replace non-metals. So I get A, D. Aqueous, uh, I don't want to, yeah, whatever, I'll just do it. And CB. Now, a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times in double replacement reactions, you get a solid forming, a precipitate. Okay? So we need to check this on our solubility page. So I'll show you how to do that in a sec here. All right, double replacement reactions, a lot of times you get a precipitate forming, which is a solid that'll fall out of solution. I'll show you this tomorrow. So let's do an example of, we'll write out the words, lead to nitrate plus potassium iodide. Okay, these are all aqueous. So 
Lead to nitrate. What's the charge on lead if it's lead two? So it'd be PB, PB plus two. What's nitrate? So this would be on your data package. You're gonna have to look on your data package. NO3, what's the charge on it? So it's NO3 minus one. Switch the charges and you're gonna get PB, PB, NO3, two. Is there aqueous? Plus potassium iodide. What's potassium? K. K. What's iodide is iodine. So potassium is K plus, iodine is A minus. Best and brightest that Royal Bay has to offer. Maybe should, uh, Run them down. Plus Ki. We can just say aqueous. All right, so we got lead nitrate, potassium iodide, both aqueous. So what happens, if you want a visual, we'll get into this later. If you're in a beaker, and we'll talk about this later on, when you add an ionic, these are ionic compounds, right? Metal and non-metal, these are ionic. When you put them in water, they break apart. So you get the, the lead ions floating around, you get the NO3 ions floating around, you get the potassium ions floating around, and you get the iodine ions. They're all floating around in solution. Okay? So then what happens is, so what replaces what? If it's double replacement, in this case. Potassium and lead are gonna change places, right? That's one way to look at it, or you can look at it and say the nitrate and the iodine are gonna change places. But what happens is when they're floating around in here, the lead says, I'm more attracted to the iodine, and the potassium is more attracted to the nitrate. So they switch, all right? Now, why that happens, that's a little more involved than what we need to know. We're going to look at, there's a table called an activity series table that tells you that rates the reactivity, basically, which is more reactive. So we'll predict whether reactions happen or not. We'll do that in a couple of days. But for now... They're all, we're going to assume they all go. So the lead and the iodine want to bond, and the potassium and the nitrate want to bond. So the products are going to be um, Pb, which is 2, and the iodine, which is minus 1. So I'm going to get PbI2 plus... the potassium and the nitrate, which is KNO3. Does that make sense what happened there? The metals are just switching. Essentially, you're doing this. The lead comes over and kicks out the potassium. That's what happens. So then we get lead iodide, potassium nitrate. Now, then you've got to go to your data package. So if we go to our data package... And you're going to find the solubility table, this one right here. Okay. All right. Now you got to predict if something's soluble or not, whether it form a solid. So we got. What did we have? Lead nitrate, potassium nitrate, and lead iodide. So let's look at potassium nitrate, the KNO3. You find nitrate on here. There's nitrate. Soluble means it does not form a solid. Okay? It is solid with everything. All means every ion. All right? Nitrate will not form a solid. So if it doesn't form a solid and it's in water, then we just write AQ. The lead iodide, so we go back to our table. <clears throat> the non-metals are all over here. These are all non-metals. So iodine, iodide, right there. If you look, it's solid, so it's split into two parts. Soluble with everything, all others. 
and it's not soluble or low solubility with silver, lead, and copper. We have lead, right? We have PBI2. We have this and this. So that means it's low solubility. So that means that it forms a precipitate. It forms a solid. So tomorrow I'll show you a reaction like this. You get lead falling out of solution. Well, lead iodide, in this case, falling out of solution. Also, a lot of heavy metals like lead, things like that, are brightly colored. They used to put lead into paint for pigmentation. They don't do that anymore because little kids would eat the lead. That's not good for you. Right? It messes up your enzymes and then that just doesn't, that's not a good thing. So they don't put lead in paint anymore. But old paint, if you have, if you buy an old house and you have to sand the walls and stuff, you got to wear masks and be careful because there's lead in the paint. Just like they used to put lead into gasoline. And then the, the, um, they started measuring the lead concentrations in people and it went through the roof. Because when you burn the gasoline, the lead gets thrown in the atmosphere and then lead concentrations in all the food and you're breathing it in and all this kind of stuff went up. And the lead also used to be graphite replaced lead, right? Yeah, they don't, yeah. In pencils, they don't use lead anymore. They use graphite, which is carbon, sheets of carbon. Because then people would put People would put yeah, that's not good. Okay, so that is double replacement. All right, acid base neutralization. This is, a, this is essentially a double replacement reaction. It's a special case though. Um, so it's always going to be an acid plus a base and the products are always the same when an acid base reaction happens. One of the products is water. H2O. Why are we? H2O plus a salt. Now when they say a salt, that just means an ionic compound, essentially. It's not table salt. It doesn't have to be sodium chloride every time. Okay? So, acids always start with H for grade 11. That's not always true. There's different types of acids. But for us, they always start with H. And bases always end in? Hydroxide. OH. So, if we start with, if we have HCl, aqueous plus NaOH aqueous. Metals replace metals. What are the metals in this reaction? What's one of the metals? Sodium would be one of the metals, right? Metals are always written first. What's the metal, and I'm putting it in quotes, in the other part? It's the hydrogen. Okay, so hydrogen comes over, bounces sodium. You always produce water. You know one of the products is going to be water every time it's an acid-base reaction. So water plus the Na now bonds to the Cl, and in this case, because I used the right one, we actually get quote-unquote table salt. Okay? Always, always, always. They also release energy usually, neutralization reactions. So you get, we'll learn later on that uh, you can write the energy in. But for now, I just need you to be able to predict products. All right, so that's a fairly simple uh, neutralization reaction. The acids can get more complex. So H3PO4. Does anybody know what that acid's called? You might have to look on your data package. Phosphoric acid. That's phosphoric acid. The base will be MgOH2, magnesium hydroxide. <clears throat> so as soon as you recognize it's an acid-base neutralization, you know one of the products is water. That's one of the products is always water. Plus, what? Where does this magnesium go? It has to come over here, right? And kick out the hydrogen. So you're going to get Mg 
Magnesium has a charge of plus two. PO4, phosphor, phos, phosphate, sorry, has a charge of minus three. So that is going to form Mg3 PO4 2. Okay. All right, so that's a special type of uh, double replacement. It technically is a double replacement because you can see the metals are replacing the metals. We're getting two different reactions, except because it's an acid and a base, we're always producing water as one of the byproducts. All right, we got one more to do. The fun one that everybody likes when you see it. it. Oh, we didn't balance it. Is the first one above balanced? Yeah. Yeah, it is. All right. Okay, we got to balance this. So, what are we going to do? You want to? I'll let you go at it and then we'll put up the answer. I think I did it. Is it two, three, six? Are we ready? Two, three, six. So if you look here, there's two phosphate groups. So I put a two in front of here to get two phosphate groups. That gives, then count the hydrogens. Two times three is six hydrogens. Here, there's two there. Oh, sorry, I also balanced the MGs. There's three there, so let's put a three there. Two hydrogens times the three is six. So six and six is 12 hydrogens. So I put a six there to get my 12 hydrogens, and then the O's work out. Okay? All right, we got one more type. Combustion. This is everybody's favorite when you're doing demos. These are the big booms, the big flames. Okay. Combustion reaction. Basically, you're burning stuff. All right? You're burning a hydrocarbon. So it's going to be carbon, certain amount, HY. The reason we write HY is because methane is CH4. It's always a hydrocarbon, so carbon and hydrogen. Methane, that's methane. Propane is C3H8, I think. That's propane. It's always some sort of hydrocarbon that you're producing. But whenever you burn something, you always need oxygen gas, right? If you don't have oxygen, you can't burn it. And the products are always the same no matter what hydrocarbons you burn. You always produce carbon, excuse me carbon dioxide and water. Those are always the products. It doesn't matter what the hydrocarbon you burn is. Now the ratios are gonna be different, like when you balance it, but they always produce CO2 and water. Those are always, always, always the products. All right? They also produce a bleep ton of heat, okay? But you'll see that tomorrow. Um, so let's do, well, if we're gonna do methane, CH4, Methane gas plus oxygen produces CO2 in water. <clears throat> uh, 
<clears throat> if you're going to balance this, I have eight hydrogens. That means or I have four hydrogens, sorry. So I need a two there. That gives me four hydrogens on that side. So I need a two there, and then it's balanced. Those are the ratios that change all the time. So for example, if we're going to produce or burn propane, C3H8, if you're doing a barbecue, you react it with uh, gas, hydrogen, oxygen, gas. You always get CO, CO2 and water, but the ratios are going to be different. So if you're going to balance this, this is propane, this is methane. <clears throat> I have three carbons on this side, so I need three carbons there. I have eight hydrogens, so I put four there, and then check the oxygens. So four oxygens plus six is 10, so I need to put a five there. So you can see the products are always the same, but we get more carbon dioxide and more water produced when you burn propane, which makes sense because there's more hydrogens produced in there. If you burn something that has sulfur in it, so for example, so it's a hydrocarbon, C5H12S, whoops, still need oxygen. Because you're burning a hydrocarbon, you're going to get CO2 and water produced, always, but you will also produce SO2, okay, sulfur dioxide. So just be aware of that, and this one I won't. And then what happens, so if you want, if you look at it from an environmental point of view, so if you produce, if you burn a hydrocarbon that has sulfur in it, you get carbon dioxide and water, but you, because you produce this SO2 into the atmosphere, what happens is the SO2 then reacts with the water in the atmosphere to produce sulfurous acid, which is basically acid rain, okay? So the, the, the rain that's coming down has been acidified because sulfur dioxide has been produced into the atmosphere, okay? As a result of burning some hydrocarbons. <clears throat> all right, is that okay? Have you seen all those reactions before or most of those reactions before? I think synthesis, decomp, single replacement, double replacement should have been, you should have seen those. Are they? Perfect. Uh, hydrocarbons, and then you got acid base. All right. Uh, all I want you to do for the next 10 minutes of class is tell me what those are. What type of reactions those are, please. You have that sheet, right? You just got to tell me if it's single, double, hydro, uh, combustion, et cetera.